Wow, Kang is getting drastic, not minor, drastic changes to his kit. And from what I can see, this is going to be a Weaver level powered character. Like he's going to be good, but there is a lot of strings attached around his event and things like that. Some of the stuff I'm not really thrilled about. A uh, lot of things for next week. And so we have all the changes here in red. Before we do that, and before we go over the blog post, there's an infographic from Benny Westside. And this is typically found on Instagram. Just going over what you really need to save and start saving and hoarding, right? Uh, save Blitz refreshes for an event that is starting on Monday. Then on Thursday of next week, there's a uh, event which is going to be the way that we get a five red Ultron potentially. Save power cores, gold orbs, and raid refreshes. So you get credits by playing raid battles. And then there is an, an alliance um, milestone thing where you have to use power cores for the donations, for the Stark Tech donations, basically. So that's the thing. And that's about it. Now, let's get into the Kang kit because oh, this is crazy. And... I'm not sure if he's going to be striker or raider. I don't know. I, I can see the advantages to both, but we're going to just go over some of the things that were changed here in red. His basic uh, temporal blow, temporal blow, att attack the most injured enemy for 290% piercing and apply disrupted. That is on his basic attack, like a ping attack to hit somebody. Like if you're stuck behind a taunt, you could still get to the low health character with his basic. That is not bad. That is very good. His special now will clear all barrier on primary adjacent targets. Apply slow for two turns. Apply defense up to self and all allies. Apply offense up to self and all master of evil allies. This is going to make him a much more viable plug and play character um, in multiple game modes. Ultimate. And we're going to get to the scary part. The scary part or the interesting part. The cool part, if you will, is going to be in his passive. Ultimate, time's up. Uh, and there was an adjustment here. Uh, clear all barrier, clear all death proof, apply defense down to all enemies, attack all enemies for piercing, clear three positive effects, and reduce speed bar by 10%. In addition to all the stuff that he did before. Now, this is the part that makes me wonder, like, like how good is he going to be and how viable is he going to be long term? He basically has a cable mechanic, which is going to be work used on offense. And I, I got some clarification on what that means. On offense, fill speed bar for 5% for self and all allies. So that works exactly the same as cable, but it will not work when you're on arena defense, cosmic crucible defense, or war defense, just on offense. So if you like, if you're loading into battle, that is when it will be working. Uh, not RTA, I'm guessing. I'm not really sure how it works in RTA, but I'm sure it'd be offset with each other, or maybe I didn't ask about that. On Crucible Offense, apply speed up for two turns and all Masters of Evil allies. Okay, nice. On turn, attack all enemies for piercing, steal 3% health from all enemies, and redistribute yourself. This attack bypasses heal block and ignores defense up. Very nice. And then on Crucible Offense, if this character has four or more Masters of Evil allies, apply one vulnerable up to a maximum of five to all enemies. Wow. So he, this is kind of what um, Cloak and Dagger, I think, have something like this. So that's pretty cool. 30% uh, max health, gain an additional 20% crit chance and 10% damage for self or any Master of Evil ally with offense up. So this is drastically different, uh, drastically better. And this right here is, uh, you know, this is a turn-based game. Turn-based game, the you know, the most important stat is going to be speed, who goes first, turn meter manipulation, on offense, fill speed bar by 5% for self and all allies. Now, it's worth noting that Apocalypse Passive has something that affects basically only Emma. So that's not going to affect, uh, this passive part right here on Apocalypse is not going to affect this at all. Uh, but basically, you know, we're still playing K... Uh, cable today uh and he just dies we're just using him for that that, that simple part of his kit well king is going to have something similar so this guy is going to get a lot of use now the question came up 
is he going to be a dark promotion character, dark promotion credits? And I got confirmation from Archangel. Kang is not DPCs. Now let's get into it. We're just going to read the developer comments. We're going to go over the events. We're going to go over uh, all the details with that are coming up. And this is going to be a little bit more detailed. I uh, gift uh, destructive diva event, atrocious attraction, gift your roster a bouquet of rewards for February 13th with the coming atrocious, atrocious attraction event. Well, I, what's atrocious about is we're going to be blitzing on Valentine's day. Nothing says I love you like blitzing during dinner, uh, score points. This three-day milestone by earning Valentine Orb Fragments from Blitz Battles wins. And then say, be mine to big rewards. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me that you haven't, like, been at dinner somewhere and excused yourself to, uh, to go to the restroom to do your, like, war payout attacks or a war attack. <laughs> I know I have. Uh, Valentine's Orb, hopefully not blitzing. Valentine's Orbs can take character shards from the side pillars and orange teal gears in the middle pair. Uh, milestone rewards include Destructive Diva Progress, that's the month-long event, and shards for Marvel couples, including Icarus, Cersei, Pyro, Iceman, Dazzler, Longshot, Moo Dragon, Phyla, and more. Okay, so that's that. Grand Theft Quantum. So this is the event that's starting on Thursday uh, that we talked about briefly about open gold orbs. This is a solo milestone. Open gold orbs earn alliance credits from alliance donations. So that's why they said save power cores for that and battles and raids to rack up points. So that's why it said to save your raid refreshes so you can optimize your uh, the amount of battles you play in, ra in raids. Four day milestone, grow your roster with these giants re rewards. And the most important part is going to be the five red star Ultron ability materials, tech gear and Pym tech character shards. So there's that. Uh, there's going to be a blitz rumble for Pym tech. And then this is the part that's controversial. First things first, this event right here, King the Conqueror Improvements is not the event uh, to unlock King. This is like a, it's kind of a little bit confusing, but this is like a follow-up event for people that chose to wail hard on King and the other uh, Master of Evil. So we're gonna read this and I'm not really a fan of this. This kind of reminds me of what they did with War Dogs. Uh, we've been reviewing the community feedback surrounding King the Conqueror's kit in our team is in agreement that King deserves uh, this. Uh, we're going to go past this right here. Uh, King uh, King deserves an update before his release as the most fearsome, powerful, memorable villains of the Marvel Universe. King Conqueror's Kit should reflect his history properly. One of the suggestions is the cosmic villain should have a more plug and play feel similar to characters like the Doom. As such, some of the kit callouts work with Master Reveal removal. So we went over all that. Let's skip to the event part that I was talking about. King Hunt. Like I said, this is not... Uh, the event that unlocks him. Unleash King the Conqueror in battle and seize rewards for the Master of Evil starting on Friday with the King Hunt event. Earn Teal Gear T2 ISO credits and more to power up your roster during the special mission for King and his allies. This event will require King to participate. See, that's the part I'm talking about. You're gonna have to use King to participate in the event. So the people that wailed, right? So make sure to purchase his orb or offers to recruit this Keystone Master of Evil character and spend as many and spend to get as many rewards as possible. Wow, that was my, I, did I read that wrong? Did I read that wrong? I don't think I did. Uh, here's how the conquest work. Difficulty, test drive. Uh, wield a mission uh, provided Master of Evil team in battle against some of the top cosmic crucible defensive team including Young Avengers, Tangle Wed, Eternals, X-Men, Wakandas. The difficulty will not cost any energy and will feature any rewards, but Cosmic Crucible bonus will be active so you can use these nodes to test out the capabilities of Master of Evil. I think what we really need is a, I, I'm, I'm, I think that's great, uh, no complaints. Uh, I think what we really need is a, a um, like we do in Alliance War, we have a, a practice mode. We need a Cosmic Crucible passing mode where we can go up against our own defense or our Alliance mates defense, something like that. Hard difficulty. Now, this is this is not that controversial. It'll be King and Pym Tech or, and or Master of Evils. It's going to be the heroic difficulty. Now, this is where you're going to get Teal Gear, T2, ISO 8, Class Credits, and Basic Orb Fragments. Now, heroic difficulty is going to be King, Absorbing Man, and Titania, and you're going to need them at three, four, five, six, seven stars to get all the good rewards. The Those who have, recru recru those who have recruited King, Absorbing Man, Titania, 
can earn the heroically difficult modes, which can be completed for the first time rewards. Uh, teal raid orb fragments, T2 level ones, four. I think everybody needs these level fours, right? To get baby apocalypse and the super, super rare level five ions. So I believe that they will have an abundance of offers for people that are willing to whale and purchase Absorbing Man and Titanium because I, I suspect that they probably should have released this information earlier when these uh, characters were able to sell if they wanted to sell more. Uh, but then it occurred to me that they just will have secondary and third or expensive offers. But yeah, look, if you want to get through these nodes, you're going to have seven star versions, right? Not great. Uh, it is what it is, but there's going to be a milestone event to unlock King. So uh, orbs offers or the upcoming he who remains milestone event and the milestone events are all a little bit different for each character. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. Sting of the Wasp. Now this was in the data mine and Tana uh, was thinking that based on the data mine that he looked up that there might be two new difficulties like hard difficulties. Hard to say. I mean, we got that uh, raid out of nowhere, right? Which they also talk about here. Catch Quantum Fever on the February 17th, which is late next week with the return of Wasp event campaign. Sting the Wasp. Join the Wasp's attempts to track down a stolen uh, cache. Cache. I don't know how to say that. Pimtech. That is explosive ramifications for Nexus Earth. Keep in mind that if you've already completed the Sting of the Wasps, you won't be able to earn first-time rewards. So I, I, to me, that means that those two new difficulties that taunt us on the data mines aren't going to be there. I, I don't know. So we got a new bug reporting feature, which I think is a good thing right there. Um, then they make note of the new difficulties. This is the first time they acknowledge it. I thought this was a mistake because they didn't say anything about it. Spread the word. Around your alliance, new gamma ray difficulties are now live. Difficulty four and five feature first time rewards and with enemies that will test the might of your alliance. You'll need characters equipped with gear tier 16 on characters that are terrible. I don't I don't see a lot of people doing that to attempt difficulty five. I mean, what, aim and Cree and pimped. Yeah, I just don't see people doing that. Uh, the rewards are better, I guess, but not that much better. Coordinate with your alliance now and tackle these new difficulties and get those rewards. Strike pass. Uh, of note, this is happening every two weeks, which is good for free to play players because you get twice as many rewards. I think that's going to be ongoing. Uh, but for people that buy the strike pass now, we're just expected to buy it twice as much. So they're doubling up their, uh, their revenue. Uh, and it's going to feature Agatha and Wong, uh, elite store. A lot of people have been looking for the sixth red on Archangel. I've been converted over to an Archangel liker. I don't know if I love him, but I like him a lot more now. I like his ping. Character availability, Captain Carter will be going into orbs. Uh, check the web store, bunch of cool things. Weekly events, all this we pretty much went over. There's gonna be a uh, Phoenix character charge for Phoenix uh, legendary event is coming back. And then we will have payday on Friday. Two other blog posts came out late last night. Uh, quickly, there was a patch and a lot of people asking what is the patch for. Uh, we kind of speculated there was an issue with the red stars. Uh, they fixed that issue that caused some players to be stuck at 17 was fixed and then something that i was personally affected on my iphone is data that player already had downloaded into the device uh was at time being re-downloaded when it wasn't necessary and then lastly there was an offer that was broken and they fixed it or were working on it there was an offer crusher of heroes bundle that was not giving progress and the crusher of heroes milestone as intended i believe that was an offer that had like it cost like 1500 power cores and gave like 5,000 uh, po uh, points towards the event. I, that wasn't one that I considered. So, uh, but if you had a problem with that particular offer, maybe contact customer support. All right, what do you think about King? King, 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 my experience with characters that do things with uh, starting first or going first are going to be very important. I think he's gonna be a very good character plug and play, like I said at the beginning at the video, uh, on the level of importance of, let's say, Spider Weaver, and also Master of Evil is gonna be required for the next unlock of a legendary character and a legendary event that they not have not disclosed, and we have no idea on the red stars needed on that event, nor do I think they're going to tell us. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.
used against Apocalypse as Emma won't work. That sounds right to me.